Zombie Apocalypse. Welcome back, friends and fans. Mad Llama Gaming here, and today we are taking a look at the second episode of the Dawn of Man series. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to check out the first episode so you can see how we got to this point. I will be continuing from right where I left off of in the first episode. Also, if you enjoy this video and want to continue seeing more Dawn of Man videos, press that like button and make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any more Mad Llama Gaming videos. But before we jump in, I wanted to answer one of the questions I received in the comments from episode 1, and that is, does the camera rotate? And the answer to that is, yes it does, in fact really easily with the push of two buttons. I know that I never really demonstrate this during the video, and I think that is due to the fact that I like to keep the camera view the same throughout my time playing because it makes it easier to remember the layout of your village, and any future plans you have. Whenever I rotate the camera, I feel like I'm looking at my village for the first time, and it's hard to remember where each building is. But thanks for the great question, and remember to leave any questions or tips in the comments below, and I will try to address them in the next episode. That being said, let's jump into it. Looking at the talent tree, I still have a couple items I need to unlock before advancing to the next age. Out of these four, I think composite tools is the best choice, so I can start chopping down trees and mining with pickaxes. Looking for the crafting station, now I can go ahead and create those tools so my villagers can begin using them. Now I plan on doing something I've never done before with these types of games. I'm going to try to give our villagers the best work-life balance they can get. And what I mean is, I'm going to try to stay below 100% workload in the top right as much as possible. During this time, I really need to focus on two things. Gathering enough tech points to get to the next age, and having enough resources to support my village, especially during the winter months. I always need to make sure that I have enough food and clothes to support Lamination through the rough winter months, because the number of animals you can hunt goes way down. This hyena attack has already thrown off my workload percentage, but I think that's because I assigned everyone in town to attack it. Hopefully it'll start going down now. On the bright side, no one died, and I got free food and skin. I'm going to speed this up to times 8 again, just so I can get as much possible done during this video. Due to this new style of play, I know some villagers will not be assigned tasks every moment they are awake, but since this is a backlog style of gameplay, eventually each villager will be assigned a task when they are next in line. Plus, all this free time will boost their happiness. Since there is no dedicated roles in this game, it doesn't matter what the task is, the villager will try to get it done or die trying. That is some true dedication if you ask me. Things like this totem are currently the only thing that I have that make my villagers happy, so I need to make more, especially when my population increases. The closest we get to roles in this game is the type of tool the villager is currently equipped with. Based on the tool they are holding, they are more suitable for certain jobs. That being said, a villager will still go all the way back to the storage hut to equip a better tool if they are assigned a specific task. As you watch my workload percentage slowly decrease, I'm trying to hold off on adding any additional tasks so it can get below a 100. Looks like I'm still good on housing capacity, and could afford even a couple more villagers. Since I haven't assigned any tasks, my workload percentage is going way down. Because of this, tasks will immediately start when I assign them. The drying rack was looking a little low, so it's time to hunt so we can support our village. That's the only easy target that I see close by. And we also have this cave bear, but I don't want to risk any of my villagers. Let's get out of primal vision. I just ran out of my source of flint, which I need to make some of my tools. Hopefully I can find another source, which I remember was difficult in episode 1. Oh nice, we got a flint deposit right here. Later on I can create a mine on top of it. Now that I can make pickaxes, I can actually gather from that ore. It looks to be the only flint in the area as well. Looking at the build menu, I seem to have built every item that I've unlocked so far. I just need to continue the grind of getting tech points and unlocking additional items. I'm going to try the bold strategy of adding a completely new tent to entice wandering villagers, even though I have enough space. This worked last time, so it's worth a shot again. Plus, I bet a new person would prefer their own house instead of sharing it with a bunch of people they just met. I have a lot of wildlife coming way too close to my village. Time to round up the troops and start hunting these animals. 
There we go. Finally selected both of them. All right, are we going to go after this big boy or the youngin? I think they can handle the bigger one. Nice, get him while he's in the water. Perfect plan. No, what? You let him run away. Ugh, useless. Times eight only means times eight failure. All right, let's see if you can literally hunt something right next to you. Thank goodness. Finally, we can get some meat for the village. And this guy, he's just asking for it. Everybody stop what you're doing and show him what you got. Wow, he's seriously getting away. What a fail. Alright, you three, just go back to whatever you were doing. Yeah, start building the house again. At least that thing can't run away from you. And just like that, three people joined the village. See, the house wasn't even done, but they knew it was almost done. Wow, I can't believe it. That thing that we were hunting earlier literally came back to the village. This is too easy. You couldn't mess that up. Nice, and the hut actually finished, so the new villagers have a place to stay. That bear is still chilling over there, which is kind of concerning me. Oh wow, the work order for the flint already stopped. I need to set up one of those flags so they'll continue gathering it. Oh nice, and that's actually covering two ores. Looks like a trader also arrived. Let's see if they got anything good. They got a lot of food and leather, but I'm pretty good on food. I might buy some bread, just because I can't make it myself yet. And it's really cheap, so I'll get it all. Let's see, what will I give them? Well, I got a lot of these, so might as well. Oh wow, that was worth a lot. And then I'll give them some stone, since that's easy to get. And might as well get a leather since I don't have a lot of them. I'll give you some dry skin since they're worth a lot. Oops, gave you too much. Here, have some more stone. And that looks good to me. Nice, we actually got some knowledge points from that bread. We should have enough tech points to unlock something on the tech tree. I still need to unlock three more items before I go to the next era. Also I need 15 points to even unlock the first item which is pottery. I think I'm going to go with dog training just to help them advance. Uh oh, the first few snowflakes of winter. Luckily it looks like I have enough food to get my small village through this season. Uh oh, a hyena is attacking. Where's that at? Inside my village? Is it literally in the tent? Well, let's get all these people to get him. For some reason, I can't select the hyena. He might already be dead. Yep, it looks like they were able to finish him off quickly, and no one was killed. Plus, we're able to get some more meat for winter. Time to turn that game speed back up to times 8. And back to crafting more outfits for the winter. That whole drying rack is full of food, so I'm not worried about them starving. And this is why you always need to be prepared for winter, because looking around, I don't see anything that we can hunt. Here's a lonely ibex that we can get though. Oh wow, I lucked out, there's a group of reindeer right here. Might as well target them since they're so close. And just like that, we were able to get through winter. We even unlocked a milestone. I love these milestone animations, except for they're pretty long. So I guess I got this for surviving my first winter. Congrats, Lama Nation. You're still alive.
We have a couple hunting parties out. And looks like one of them was actually successful in getting that Ibex. I have enough tech points to get the next item, so let's do that. Since I've been forgetting about it a lot during this, I'll go ahead and get the Funeral Rituals upgrade. Plus, sling making is pretty useless. It's just a necessary step to get to bows. Alright, only one more item to unlock in this age. I definitely plan on getting to the next age during this video. Since we unlocked funerary rituals, let's see what we actually unlocked and can build now. Ah, looks like we have one item that we can build. I'll probably end up building it near one of the totems, either here or across the river. For now, let's just make sure that we have enough tools for all the newcomers. And clothes, because that is something you will always need when expanding your city. I still have plenty of housing space for any newcomers that want to join our village. Looks like some traders just pulled up. Let's see if they have anything that we can use. I think I'm just going to go with the bread and a pulse, just because we can't make it ourselves. Plus, they're selling it to us for pretty cheap, so... I didn't realize this was worth so much. Maybe we can get a couple more items from the trader. That looks like a fair trade. Let's try that bold strategy again by building more tents to see if we can entice more villagers to join. Gotta complete the circle so it feels like a real tribe. And since the workload is so low, they're starting on it right away, which is awesome. I think it's time to build that burial mound. I remember talking about it, but I don't remember actually building it. It fits in pretty well here, but I think I'm going to build it closer to the village on the mountains. Perfect. And look, they're already moving their way over there to construct it. I think I'm going to build another hearth since this village has grown so much, and it will provide more light for the newcomers. Let's also build some more food dryers, because we're definitely going to need more food as lamination grows. Might as well hunt some easy targets to fill up those dryers before winter's here. Definitely you. And you. Uh, we'll let you go. You can see the hunting groups move out. Hopefully they won't fail us. Nice, and it looks like we got that burial ground constructed. Now whenever a villager dies, they should be brought to that burial ground, and it will keep the villagers happy. Let's collect some of this fruit too, since it's so close to the village. And there's the actual finished project. Nice. Looks like they were able to hunt one horse, but the other one got away. Here's the one that got away. Let's go ahead and finish the job, and do it right this time. That looks like a strangely specific group of people making their way to my village, and they don't look like traders. Oh nice, four more people were added to Lama Nation. Seems like adding additional huts has really paid off. I just realized I have enough tech points to unlock the last item in this age. Now I can make slings. Now I only need 15 more tech points until I can unlock the next age. This should be a fun grind. Why did everything slow down so much? Oh, it must be due to this storm. Back to time's aid for ya. Alright, hunting time. I noticed we were pretty low on our food dryers. So I'm going to manually set these two to hunt a single animal so that way they can't mess up. Or at least that's the hope. The lightning is so realistic in this game. I guess that's the one thing you have to watch out with storms. A character or building can randomly get hit by lightning. That one actually came pretty close to the village. Looks like these guys are bringing in some meat from some successful hunt, which is exactly what we need. I really need to focus on stocking up enough meat for the winter for the entire village. I have villagers collecting flint on the right side, so might as well put a rock pile closer to them. Perfect. 
With this low workload style of gameplay, I am loving how villagers immediately begin working on tasks that you assign. This will definitely come in handy when you are low on food or clothes. Looks like a herd of mouflon are headed towards the village. This is way too easy to pass up. Go get them gang and make our village proud. I'm really happy they didn't mess that up. Looks like there's a horse here too, but he knew better. I'll let you live this time. Ooh, look, some flint too. Can't pass up on that either. And this time I'm not gonna mess up and I'm actually gonna put down a work order. Make it as big as possible. There's all kind of wildlife running through this area. Might as well put down a hunt work order too. This will automatically hunt any easy prey that walk through this area. Nice, looks like we're getting some successful hunts in, which is really important, especially for winter. I see stuff just laying here, but no villager. I see the dog right there, and a bear or something, but I don't see the villager. Hopefully someone ends up picking that up. There's a horse walking right through my village. This will be an easy hunt, but I need more than one person. And you. Now all three of you get him. Thank goodness, that looks so terrible at the beginning. Oh nice, it looked like it automatically marked the baby horse. There's an easy bear target that's just floating in the water that we can get, but if this goes wrong, I may end up losing a villager. Is there anyone else that's around that can help? You two are kind of far away, but sure, why not? The more the merrier, am I right? Wow, he went down pretty fast. That'll be a lot of meat for the village. And just like that, the drying racks are full. This will be great for winter, but I need to build more. That's awesome that they're starting right away, because I don't want that bear meat to spoil. I completely forgot about the axes we have made. I need to set up a tree cutting work order so we can start clearing out some of these trees near the village. This will be way more efficient than gathering sticks, and is great fuel for the fires. Let's start clearing out this side too so we have a better view of the village and for when we expand. I'm going to add a wood pile near these work orders so they don't have to walk as far. I'm going to create a few more axes to make sure we have enough. Also, a trader has arrived. Let's see if they have anything good. Might as well get some logs since they're cheap and an outfit to help during winter. I think this is all I need from them. This might sound crazy, but I actually have more meat than I can handle, and I don't want it to spoil. I have a lot of bones that I can give away. I didn't realize they were worth so much. Let me redo this and take back some of that meat. Perfect. 
Looking at the dryers, I have plenty of meat and should be set for the winter. Might as well collect back some of that stone we traded. It seems this horse still hasn't been touched, which is weird. I'll craft a few more knives so they can clean it. Maybe that is what is causing the delay. This guy even has one of those knives on him, so I have no clue what the deal is. I heard a reindeer or something over there, but I have so much meat it isn't worth the risk. On the other hand, this thing is already dead, so we can butcher it. Let's add another hut and see if we can get our population to the 20s. Might as well build a second one of these, since the people seem to enjoy it, and as my population grows I'll need more. Winter is finally here, and I have some food on the drying racks, but not as much as before. I need to make sure I have enough clothes for all my villagers as well. I'm also going to set up a tannin work order because I never did make this as big as possible so when it's tannin season they can go crazy. Oh wow, winter's already over? That was really quick. And I still have plenty of food on the dryers. Now that we're done with winter, let's see if there's anything that we can hunt. Ooh, this seems like an easy herd of prey. We'll get an adult and a baby. Nice, they actually got the donkey. I would have been really disappointed if they hadn't because that and the pigs are like the easiest thing to hunt. Oh nice, seems like we're collecting tannin as well. Plus that villager is going crazy on making leather. I'm still three tech points away from unlocking the next stage, but soon that grind should be over. And two new people joined, but no tech point. How sad. Might as well put a hunting work order over here to make my job easier. and a fishing one over here to get easy food. Looks like they're still going strong on cutting down the trees. I might as well add more food dryers since we almost filled up the three at one point. Another milestone, which means another progression clip. Look how far we've come. Let's give a hand to Lama Nation on all the progress it's made. Alright, looks like a trader's in the village. I really don't need much this time, but I might go ahead and get some tannin, just since I got a late start on collecting it. And it's pretty cheap, so that's a plus. 
I also have so many bones left over, and I'm not really using them anymore. Darn, someone just died of old age, but I guess now we'll be able to try out that burial mound. I know the villagers' morale will go down, but I don't think I have to do anything. I think they will just automatically bring the body there. Let's build another burial mound, just in case, because I'm sure we're going to lose more villagers in the future. It's annoying how the storm always disrupts my game speed. But I finally have enough tech points to unlock the next age. Looks like I'm forced to choose pottery. But luckily now I will only have to get 7 tech points to unlock the next items. And I'm already more than halfway there. Let's see if that pottery unlocked any new building. Unfortunately it doesn't look like it did. I see a notification for transportation popping up on the left, but I don't think I have that unlocked yet. That is another key element to unlock because it will increase the gathering speed of your villagers. It will be really helpful for things like cutting trees and butchering large animals because it will only take one person to bring back all the resources. Once you are able to domesticate animals like donkeys, you can use them to pull the sleds or wagons which will increase your gathering speed even more. You just have to remember that these transportation devices will eventually break down and need to be crafted again. Let's see if there's any easy prey lurking around, begging to be hunted. It's been a while since I've seen a boar, and these things are usually pretty easy to hunt. I've seen a lot of bears this game, but luckily none of them have attacked my villagers. Ah, here's some hiding on the other side of the mountains. Eh, I won't hunt them all. Nice, you can already see the hunting parties form. I forgot about my trusty sling. I really do think this tool is useless, especially compared to the spear that they can throw but it is a necessary step in order to get a bow. I was hoping this milestone reminder would just disappear on its own, but I guess I have to click on it. And look at that, lamination growing so peacefully. I really need to get some food for the village. This bison would provide a lot, but I'm gonna need a couple of villagers to hunt that one down. Lamination will definitely benefit from this, but it's not worth losing a villager. Wow, and all that talk about boars being easy to hunt, it ended up escaping. We're looking a little light on this hunting party, but hopefully the dog can help out. Oh nice, no one died. That's a huge win. Uh-oh, for some reason some hyenas are rolling up on my village. I need to pause this for a sec to make sure nothing goes wrong. For some reason that one villager is all by themselves up there, but... Hopefully they can help attack. Grab you as well. And the best part is, it looks like there's two hyenas. I don't see anyone else that's close by that can help. Let's see how this goes and hope for the best. Great, this villager's attacking it all by himself. Finally he decided to run away. Hopefully these other villagers can handle these hyenas. But it doesn't look like it's going too well. You two need to jump in and help this mess. One hyena down. Oh no, but I lost a villager too. Come on, finish him off. There seems to be another one that's joining too. This thing better not end up killing a villager too. There's like four villagers attacking it. Okay, good. They're all dead now. I managed to lose two villagers during that attack, but at least I'll get a lot of food for the village. Still looking pretty low on those food racks, but I have enough tech points to unlock something. Since episode 1 I've been trying to unlock farming, so I guess I'll go with grain processing.
That did unlock a new building, which is a mortar. So I'll go ahead and set that up. I'll put it near the tanner. I see a lot of wildlife running around near the village. Time to do something about that. Nice, the drying racks seem to be filling up. This will definitely be helpful during winter. I also seem to have unlocked a haystack, so I'm going to go ahead and build that near the village as well. I can't produce hay yet, but I should be able to collect it from wild plants near the village. Let's also build another storage tent to help with expanding the village. I'm also going to build some tents around that storage area to create a blueprint of the new expansion. And a campfire to make it nice and cozy. Alright. That looks like some of those plants you can collect for hay. I'll set up a work order so my villagers will automatically collect it. Oh nice, a trader has arrived. I'll take some of that grain since I'm missing that right now. And some flour. That should be good. That sucks that transport is still unavailable to us. I really need to work on unlocking that next. Nice, three more people just joined due to our new expansion. I've already made up for all the people we lost during that wolf attack. I need to make sure we have enough clothes for all these newcomers and babies being born. Anything hiding over here that's worth hunting? Nope, just some reds and oranges. Nothing over here either. Another wolf attack? This can't be good. At least this time they were prepared, and there was multiple villagers around. Oh wow, winter already? I wasn't expecting that. I literally have no food on the drying rack. This is not going to go well. I need to make a desperate attempt at hunting some bigger animals. More importantly, they really need to follow through with this hunt. Another wolf attack? This time he's in the water, so I have the advantage. I just need to find someone with a range item to attack. Never mind, he's already dead. That was an easy kill, which will provide the village with some food. Seems like these wolves are getting desperate like me during the winter. Great, they ended up failing that hunt. Time to finish it off, because I really need that meat. This is a perfect example of where you can learn from my mistakes. As you can tell, hunting is more difficult during the winter months, so make sure you have enough food for the entire village to last through these months. 
Otherwise, you'll be stuck hunting things you normally wouldn't. Time to add to this expansion. I have been manually adding this task because stone is something I really don't need anymore. There are literally no animals hiding around. What a shame. Time to unlock another item in the tech tree. As I said before, I think I'm going to go with sled making just so I can transport things easier. Nice, now I have access to this section. I'm going to go ahead and build a bunch of sleds. Only one villager at a time can be using a sled, so it's important to build multiple. Oh nice, I was able to survive winter even with that limited amount of food. That was cutting it pretty close though. Never go into a winter with nothing on your drying racks. Not a smart idea. Or was that just part of my original strategy? Bum bum bum. I feel like I owe all the villagers that died some revenge with this lonely hyena just sitting here. You know you deserved it. Oh wow, it didn't escape, that's a first. Looks like this hay is still growing, but it's in its off season, so I can't harvest it. Oh nice, a pack of woolly mammoths, and they're right next to my village. I really want to make it a goal of mine to hunt one of these, but I'm not going to do it when they're in a pack like this. That would just be suicide. Keep in mind that if you advance past a certain age, these things become extinct. So I can't wait too long to hunt them. I seriously don't think the trader has anything that I need. That's way too expensive right now. I guess I'll get a leather outfit, because why not? Awesome. Let's do it. I'm going to remove some of these trees just so I can see my village better. And there goes those mammoths running by. I see a couple of ibex trying to hide from being hunted. Can't allow that to happen. Might as well build another tent to grow our population. And I'm going to set up a storage tent over here just to plan for expansion later. In this game they also have these things called transport posts. It really is just a designated place to leave all of your transport devices. You don't actually need one, but it will make your village look cleaner because your villagers won't just be dropping them off in random locations. I'm going to build one just so I have a better idea on when I need to build more.
Oh, nice. I just got enough tech points to go ahead and unlock something. I have four items to choose from. I usually leave the spiritual item until last. It is important for happiness, but it doesn't advance your city in any way. Bone polishing is important because it unlocks additional tools, and I'll probably end up going with this. Pulse processing is important to unlock, but it's not really helpful until you actually can grow your own fields. Let's build some of these new tools that we have unlocked. These tools should help for harvesting hay and cutting animals. I'm going to add a campfire to this expansion. Oh nice, and four and more people joined, so we need to build some more tents as well. This strategy of enticing villagers with pre-built tents is working really well. Time to add another skull pole since my population has been growing. We'll have the triple threat over here. And build another one next to this burial ground. Here's a perfect animal to hunt. Why don't you two drop everything that you're doing and go get them? Yay, the skull pole is done. It's amazing how fast they build items when it's something that they want. <laughs> Let's see if I can sneak in another burial mound somewhere around these mountains. Is there anywhere that I can fit in? Oh, here, perfect. Trader has arrived. Let's see what you got. Looks like they have a spiritual item that I can buy and essentially unlock, but it's really expensive. I think I'm just gonna stick to the normal routine and just get food. That looks like a fair trade. Crafts more clothes for our newcomers, and more of these new tools that we unlocked. I'm going to build some more harpoons to make sure my villagers are using them when they fish. Might as well create another crafter in the expansion 
to be more efficient when producing tools. Too bad it's not fitting in there look-wise. Maybe up here. I guess we'll have to go with that. Uh-oh, two of my dogs have gotten a disease. I wonder where they've been sticking their nose. Time to put some tools in this queue. Uh-oh, winter snuck up on me and I literally have no food. Looks like I did it again. Now I have to perform the desperate attempt of seeing if there's anything I can hunt. Luckily there's a herd of pig and ibex here, but they are pretty far away, but I have no other choice. Yeah, I don't see any other animals around. Nothing over here. Let's try to unlock one more item and survive winter and then we'll call it an episode. Thank goodness they are successfully hunting animals, otherwise Lamination would be screwed. I think this time around I'm going to go with bows because they're helpful for hunting and especially defending the village. Time to craft some bows. I only need like half a dozen to start. Any easy prey decide to be helpful and wander nearby? Doesn't look like it. Nothing over here either. What a shame. And we're getting the low food warnings. Let's just focus on making it through this winter. Looks like they're finally bringing back some meat from that hunt that was really far away. I don't see anything over here, so my villagers must have killed them or scared them away. Nice, Lamination was able to survive another winter. Not gonna lie, that was a close one. That being said, I think we'll stop this episode here. I really enjoyed the low workload gameplay style I tried out during this video. But I enjoyed seeing the tasks I assigned immediately begin, and I think the villagers were happier with the better work-life balance that I gave them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, and I will continue making these Dawn of Man episodes so we can watch Llama Nation grow together. If you're still watching this video and haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss a Mad Llama Gaming video again. Make sure to check out my latest video and most recommended video as well. Also, subscribe to my other social media accounts, links are in the description below.